Welcome to my channel and an art journal tutorial. This one, we are using napkins and stencils to create our focal point. So here is the napkin that I am using. And I love this. I love angels and I love the feel of this. I love the background. There's so much I love about this. So what I don't like is the size of it. So I am playing around with the composition. Then I start just to cut it out, which you can cut through the plies. And then I decide, you know, I'm going, I, I'm going to save the tissue. So I pull off the two extra white plies and don't throw those away because we are actually going to end up using them. And then I'm water cutting with a fine liner brush the image or what I think I may use. Now, because with the violin, you only have part of it, you also have the angel wing is cut off. So both of those have to go on a straight edge. And by cutting it apart, I can separate it, put it on a bigger piece. But I really wanted that angel to be closer in. And so I'm playing with the excess images because you get four. And I'm thinking maybe I can add to the wing here. I'm playing around with that, just trying it out, basically. Then I remember that I have a stencil with angel wings. And so I thought, oh, you know what? I'm going to stencil with this with brown paint onto that white ply, the throwaway part of the napkin. So when you're using this, I'm using medium body paint. If you're using craft paint, it's more liquidy. You have to be careful because that's going to really wet down the napkin and it's going to become very, very fragile. And right there, I test out the angel on that. I love the look of the angel wing. And so since I've got the stenciling out, I figure I'm gonna make extra. What I don't use can go in the stash and be used for something else, but I'm absolutely loving the look. And then I think, oh, what if I did this with modeling paste? So I grab my champagne gold modeling paste from the crafters workshop, and I mix in a little bit of the brown. And I don't blend it completely, I want to get a little bit of that brown to match what was on the violin. Then I'm using the key card and I'm just putting this on the tissue paper. Now you'll notice that underneath I've now put a card. That's so that I can lift it up and it can and set it up aside to dry. Because like I said, once it gets wet, the napkin gets very, very fragile. And it's really difficult with the weight of the modeling paste to move it. So there I'm testing out the color, loving the look. And since I've got the modeling paste out and I had some mixed up, I make some more. Look at that shimmer and shine. So now I'm back to playing with the composition. Getting rid of the wing that comes with the image from the napkin and I'm going to substitute the wing from my stenciling with the modeling paste. I've decided that I do not want these piano keys. They're not really going to play with what I've got going on. I'm going to add some other motifs and patterns in other ways. I think I can do lots in that empty space as well as a sentiment. I got these stamps, for, uh, they are from Stamp Stamperia, and they are available in Minnie's Napkins, and I will put a link to that in the description bo box below if you want to go check them out. And I decide I'm just going to stamp these on, again, the white plies of the napkin. These have music notes, and I'm thinking some of that's going to, might work well with what I've got going on. Then we've got this music score here. If I don't end up using it here, I know that it will go in my stash and I can use it. Now, if you're wondering why I'm just not stamping this straight onto my art journal page, I could do that. This is going to allow me to play with the positioning of it and to overlap. I have more control if there's a part of the uh, image that I don't want, for whatever reason, I can edit that out. 
And it is also going to give me some more texture on the page because even though the napkin is going to go translucent, it will impart a certain amount of texture to the finished piece. And when we want mixed media, we want texture, we want pattern. Now, a lot of this pattern we aren't going to see at the end, or very little of it is peeking through. But I'm absolutely loving this motif as well. And you will definitely see me using this again and showcasing the stamped image in a more upfront version. So here I am just editing what parts I want, just cutting it with the water on the liner brush. Right now, I just want that vintage, old world kind of feel to the background. But I am aware that this is very much a background. I'm just adding elements that contribute to the whole picture. And here you can see I can cut whatever section I want. So again, I'm playing with the composition. And yes, it is getting busy, but I am going to put color on that and some of that is going to get knocked back. Now that my modeling paste wings are dry, I'm using the I'm water cutting it and cutting out the wings parts, getting rid of any excess. And I'm absolutely, those modeling paste wings are absolutely to die for. So now that I am happy with the composition at this point, I'm grabbing my TCW gel medium, but I thinned it out in this little tub. I like it at a thinner consistency, especially when I'm decoupaging with napkins. And because I go through a lot, I've mixed it up with water for this purpose. When I get to the end of this, I realize that composition wise, I could have now snugged that angel right up against the violin because I've added the wing. The reason I needed it to be on the far left side is because the wing was cut off. But since I fixed that problem by using the stencil wing, I could have snugged it up. And if I was doing this page again, that's what I would have done. I would have put the angel back where in its original position next to the violin in that bottom right hand corner. And I think that would have been a better composition than what I did end up with. But like I say, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. And I and I did solve the problem, but then I kind of Oversolved it. Cutting off the excess. And yes, right now it is very busy. So I grab some pink. There's a little bit of pink in that napkin and gray and the brown. So I grab those colors, mixing with white gesso and some Naples yellow. And I'm mixing it on my glass media mat. And then I'm just putting that on. I'm cutting off the edges. I'm knocking back some of the pattern. I'm just mixing these colors right on the page. And warning, it goes through an ugly stage times 10. But I keep telling myself, you're not done. You're going to be adding more. You're going to be shading the angel and the violin to make them stand out as focal images. You're going to add the sentiment. It isn't over till it's 
over. But I admit that as I was doing this right about now, it was like, ugh. And I think part of it is also because it's such a light, pastel -y background and that gray isn't something that I'm normally used to working with. And so it kind of fights your natural inclinations when you're doing it. But I was determined to push through. I'm wiping it off with a baby wipe here and there, adding more. But as I said, remember, this is just another layer to the page. So I grab the stencil called Endless Swirls, and I'm using the gray, the gray mixed with the brown, the straight up gesso to stencil with and impart some patterning, some interest into the background. I'm using one stencil, different colors that are all in the background. And this is really, it's really giving it that vintage wallpaper kind of feel, but it is also getting a little busier. Here I'm putting the white gesso through and it's giving some pops of brightness and I really like that really adds to it. It works really well with the lightness of the angel. Adding some more with brown, I'm just layering it up. And it looks very texturized, even though most of that, aside from the texture that you get from the napkins, now I'm working on shading the focal images. I want them to pop. So I'm coming in with brown here. I'm shading to make that violin stand out more against the very busy background. And then I'm adding a little bit of shading around my little sleeping angel. Highlights as well. Now I'm getting the matte gel medium that I've thinned down and I'm gluing down the angel wings. Now the white part that is on its napkin goes completely translucent and you actually end up seeing the color and the pattern that whatever's behind it comes through. Now I grab my ink tense blocks and I shade around the edge and then activate it and it gets that watercolorly look. The ink tense blocks, if you're not familiar with them, are watercolor like, but they are made of ink. So when they're dry, they are permanent. And here I'm using, I end up actually, I grabbed the wrong color, which ended up being very much the right color. It was kind of a pinky chocolatey color. I think that was the name of it. So I had to grab and look. Just adding. You know, and that little bit of highlighting around that angel really made that angel pop out. Now I'm happy with the angel, but I'm not happy with the composition. I'm wishing that I had snugged that angel back up against the violin and it just seemed to want something else. So I grabbed my stencil Magnolia Blossom, and I'm using white pearl modeling paste, and I'm putting that on, again, another piece of 
white ply of the napkin. And that modeling paste, that white pearl stuff is to die for. It is so amazing. It has that pearlized effect that just shimmers and shines. So once that dries, and when I dry this on either a tissue paper or on napkin, I tend to let it dry by itself. And it takes a little while. So there was a, a time delay here. And then I'm water cutting the excess off. And as usual, I do more than what I think I'm going to use. That allows for any creative oopses that happen. And then whatever I don't use, it goes in my stash. And I have one of those plastic envelopes filled with all my modeling paste embellishments that I've stenciled. So I play with the composition a little bit. Got my sentiments, seek peace. I thought went well with my sleeping angel. And then I'm using the thinned matte gel medium to glue it down. And you can just see that shimmer from that white pearl modeling paste. Thinking maybe I could put another one here. Now I grab my General's charcoal. I wanted to add a little bit more black to go with the black that's in the lettering. And quite often I have two colors, a darker tone that's in the page and then the black. And then I'm adding some shading on the focal images as well. And then I thought I was pretty much done. But I decided to add some gold splatter and then some brown splatter. Wiping it off the angel face because I didn't think that looked particularly appealing. And I took pictures and I thought I was done, but I thought it was just so pale. I wanted to add a little bit more color. So I grab my Inktense blocks and I get that pinky corally tone. I match it by looking at my swatches and I'm just using water on a brush, dabbing it on the block and then adding color a little bit more to heighten the color in some of the places on the page. And I don't show all of this because I just played around till it looked good to me. But I did want to share with you that you can beef it up. If you want to use acrylic paints, you can. You just need to thin it down so it's more of a wash. Then I need, thought I needed some script. So I used the Tim Holtz, I think it's called Reflections, but I'll link that in the description box below.
Then I take the block and add water, get it to a consistency, and I splatter a little bit with that coral color as well, just to finish it off. So this page took quite a journey. There were several wins, several discoveries of things that you can do, and things that I would improve if I was doing again. Give me a thumbs up, like my video, go follow me on Instagram, and as always, keep being creative.